Antarctica, a continent cloaked in ice. A place of scientific exploration, or so we're told. But what if there's more to this frozen expanse than meets the eye? Smuggled photos have emerged, offering tantalizing hints of an unbelievable reality. Could these images reveal ancient ruins, impossible structures, or a presence that defies everything we know about our world? Prepare to question what lies hidden beneath the ice. Han is the Ninjin. Arguably the most famous folklore creature associated with Antarctica, the Ninjin is said to be a terrifying deep sea cryptid that has been terrorizing sailors for centuries. First recorded in the early 1700s by Japanese sailors who were exploring the southern ocean, the Ninjin is often described as an enormous white creature with an elongated head and body that resembles that of a whale. But the creepiest part is that many tales describe it as having two human legs. I mean, just look at that thing. Creepy. Now, the Ninjin has recently had a sort of resurgence after an alleged government employee spotted the creature on a research vessel. Originally posted to 2chan, many others came forward with photos or video. They claim to be the exact same creature, but officially, no confirmation of its existence has ever been set in stone. Some think it could be an alien, others are firm that it's a sea monster, but either way, it is one of the most feared cryptids in all of the Antarctic. Moving on to number 9, Antarctic Godzilla. Deep in the freezing temperatures of the Antarctic Sea, it's said there lies a creature so frightening that even one look into their eyes could be your last. Allegedly first spotted by a Japanese research trip in 1958, the Antarctic Godzilla is described as a monster with a head length of 30 inches who looks like a cow from the front but a monkey from the top. Said to be covered in brown dark hair with large eyes and pointed ears, the worst and scariest part of this creature is the serrated fin on its back that it can use to slice you in two at the slightest sign of aggression. Which frankly sounds terrifying. But it only gets worse. So as this creature is named Antarctic Godzilla, it's, you know, supposed to be super huge and terrifying, but it's believed that it can survive in not just water, but land too. So pretty much you are never safe. So really it's just one more reason that visiting the Antarctic isn't really for me. Moving on to number eight, an alien base. We have reached that time in our list where we get to talk about everyone's favorite mysterious being, the aliens of course. Now when it comes to aliens, there are lots of opinions about how real or not real they are, but if this next story is to be believed, there is allegedly a secret alien base with advanced and unconventional weapons hidden in the icy waters of the Antarctic. So according to a video uploaded by UFO hunters, a mysterious anomaly about 180 kilometers off the coast of Antarctica has been spotted and they think not only is it some kind of hangar for a spaceship, but that actual aliens are likely residing there too. Now this may be more on the conspiracy side of things rather than urban legend, but whatever, it's all fun. Believers claim that an expedition should be organized so we can confirm the existence of the aliens, but others think that if we aren't careful, we may just kick off an intergalactic war. So whatever it is, let's just hope we tread carefully. Moving on to number seven, Deception Island Sea Monster. In 1906, a Norwegian Chilean whaling company started using Whalers Bay as a base for their factory ship. Other operations followed closely behind them, and then the next Next thing you know, it was a boom town. But then, by just 1931, after a sweeping decline in the market for whale oil due to the Great Depression, the island was abandoned. Since then, it has quite literally been a ghost town, with visitors reporting seeing strange orbs of light coming from the abandoned huts, seeing apparitions of people walking around, and even hearing disembodied voices. But it's not just ghosts and ghouls that are said to creep around the island, but a mysterious, inexplicable monster as well. This satellite image found on Google Earth has spawned numerous theories about what could be hiding in the area, but so far no one has ever come across it to be able to find out more. Next up at number 6 now we have the lake. Lake Vostok is one of the biggest lakes on the planet. If you've never heard of it, 
don't worry that's probably because Lake Rostock is buried underneath more than 2 miles of ice in Antarctica. It's been covered in ice for at least 15 million years but it's still liquid down there. The crushing layer of ice from above and geothermal activity below have ensured that. Its presence was first suggested in the 1960s by a Russian pilot who noticed a large smooth patch of ice above the lake from the air. Radar experiments by British and Russian researchers in 1996 confirmed the lake's existence. The lake is massive. 140 43 miles long, 31 miles wide, and up to 2,625 feet deep. In 2012, Russian scientists managed to successfully drill a hole down to the lake's water. They believe that down there is microbial life that is unique from everything else here on Earth, having been isolated for 15 million years. Now the search begins. Next up, number five, now we have Allen Hills 84001. In 1984, a team of US meteorite hunters discovered a Martian meteorite in Antarctica's ice. It was only about four. 4.3 pounds, but by 1996 it was causing quite a stir when a group of scientists claimed they had found evidence of microscopic life in the actual meteorite. Was this proof of life on Mars, or at least that life used to be on Mars because they thought it was fossilized? The media went into a frenzy either way. Even US President Bill Clinton gave a speech about it. The hysteria was because the strange chain structures on that meteorite looked like they could have been fossilized bacteria. There was also the fact that the meteorite broke off from Mars about 17 million years ago during a time when Mars had liquid water on its surface and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. It seemed like life could have been around there. Then. Eventually, these claims were rejected though, and the features of the meteorite were explained without requiring life to be present. The meteorite now remains on display in the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Moving on to number four now, we have the dinosaur. In February 2019, the fossil of a new species of reptile was announced. It had been found by researchers in the Antarctic ice during a 2010 2011 expedition. It's believed to be an early relative of dinosaurs who lived in Antarctica millions of years before the continent drifted to its position over the South Pole and became uninhabitable for most complex life forms. Around 250 million years ago, Antarctica was covered in lush forests and rivers with many species of wildlife living there, including reptiles. The temperature is thought to have almost never dropped below freezing point. The scientists named the iguana-sized reptile Antarctanax shackletoni. Antarctanax translates to Antarctic King, and shackletoni is in honor of the Antarctic explorer Ernest Shackleton. Moving on to number three now, we have Patchy Mass. In June 2018, YouTube user Wow For Real made a video showing his discovery of a 14 mile structure buried in Antarctica. He made the discovery using Google Maps and described it as a patchy mass that you could easily see from outer space. He said he'd used Google Maps to search the entire continent before and had never found anything like this. He even pointed out that there were strange brush strokes over the mass which made him think someone was trying to cover this up. It didn't take long before people started speculating about what was going on here. The YouTuber himself put forward the idea that if the brush effect was removed, perhaps Perhaps we see some sort of giant UFO mothership buried in ice. In all probability, it's probably just a research facility, but we still don't know for sure yet, as this strange block still remains on Google Maps to this day. You can even go and see it for yourself. Coming in at number two now, we have the wreckage. In January 2013, three Canadian men took off on a plane from the Amundsen Scott South Pole Research Station en route to an Italian research base in Terra Nova Bay. At some point during the journey, the emergency transmitter went off and a search party was sent sent out to find them. Bad weather hampered rescue efforts and after 6 days they finally found the plane but it was too late to save them. It had crashed into one of Antarctica's highest mountains. The rescue team were unable to get into the cockpit and were only able to retrieve some luggage. After 4 hours there they determined it was too risky to stay any longer as the weather was taking a serious turn for the worse and they were afraid of an avalanche occurring. It took 9 months before another team set out during Antarctica's summer period to retrieve the frozen remains of the 3 Canadian. Men. And finally, number one now, we have Endurance. We talked about the explorer Shackleton earlier. Well, Endurance was the name of the ship that he used to go to Antarctica in the first place. The ship was abandoned by Shackleton and his team when she was crushed by ice in the Weddell Sea off Antarctica, causing her to sink. In the years since then, there have been three expeditions that have tried and failed to locate Endurance. In 2018, that changed though. A team at the Scott Polar Research Institute launched a new search using more sophisticated technology. To 
such as GPS and drones to help them see possible routes in the ice. They also used an autonomous underwater vehicle. The video you're watching right now was released in February 2019 and according to what I've read the search for endurance is happening at this moment looking for a ship thousands of feet beneath the frigid waves. I thought I'd end on this one because it's not been discovered quite yet and that's kind of exciting. There's a lot more to uncover in the incredible world of Antarctica. And number 10, the mysterious restricted zones. Restricted zones in Antarctica have long intrigued adventurers and conspiracy theorists alike. While some may speculate about dark reasons behind these restrictions, the reality is more grounded in environmental conservation and scientific research. Allegedly. One scientific factor behind these restricted zones is the need to safeguard sensitive ecosystems and wildlife breeding grounds, as Antarctica boasts unique biodiversity including penguins, seals, and various microorganisms. Human interference in these areas could disrupt these delicate ecosystems, leading to potentially irreversible damage. Moreover, most Antarctic exploration is dedicated to scientific research, not tourism. Researchers study climate change, geology, and the mysteries of the continent's ice sheets, and to maintain the integrity of these investigations, Certain areas are off limits to prevent contamination or interference. Additionally, Antarctica holds numerous historic and culturally significant sites like research stations and explorer huts. These locations are protected to preserve their historical value and ensure that they remain intact for future generations to study and admire. So while the allure of hidden secrets persists, the true reasons for these restrictions are grounded in conservation and the pursuit of knowledge. Speaking of which, at number 9 are the conservation efforts. Antarctica, the icy realm at the southern end of our planet, hides many mysteries, but dark reasons prevent unrestricted exploration. Now as mentioned, conservation efforts are paramount. The untouched beauty of Antarctica could be mirrored by human activity, and contamination and damage to its ecosystems loom as potential threats if we don't tread lightly. Moreover, the wildlife here already faces risks. Penguins, seals, and seabirds alike call this frigid wilderness home, and exploration can disturb their delicate existence. If you're enjoying this video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. At number 8, good luck getting there. Icebergs, my friends, may seem like an innocuous obstacle, but they're just the tip of the iceberg, if you will, when it comes to the dark reasons no one's allowed to explore the Antarctic freely. You see, limited accessibility is just the tip of this frozen mystery. First, let's talk about those icebergs. They're not just chunks of ice floating around, they're colossal, unpredictable beasts. Like, the Titanic, as we all know, met its fate with one of these behemoths, and that was in the comparatively ice-free waters of the North Atlantic. Imagine the peril of navigating through the variable maze of these frozen monstrosities in the unforgiving southern cities. But that's just the start. Antarctica holds secrets beyond its icy exterior. At number 7, geopolitical tensions in Antarctica are a cold, hard reality. Though it's devoid of military skirmishes, the region is a simmering pot of territorial disputes. You see, several countries, including the United States, Russia, and China, have laid claims to various parts of the icy continent, and this could escalate into a diplomatic quagmire. The Antarctic Treaty, in place since 1959, aims to preserve the area for scientific research and environmental protection but beneath the surface, these nations maintain their ambitions. Recent years have seen an uptick in activity, with some establishing research stations and some doing who knows what. The fear is that competition for resources and materials and fresh water could turn this frozen land into a geopolitical battleground. So while the Antarctic may seem like an untouched frontier, it's a political ice maze with dark undertones that could chill international relations. And aliens? Well, that's just a different kind of frosty tail. Next up at number six, the Drake Passage. So obviously the Drake Passage itself is not an urban legend, there's no question about that, but there are many urban legends that go along with it. As many people likely already know, the Drake Passage is considered to be one of the most powerful convergence of seas. Located where the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean converge with the Southern Seas, it is notorious for its treacherous waters and even more notorious for the alleged souls who lost their lives while trying to cross it. It's said over the years that more than a thousand people have died attempting to pass through its terrifying and turbulent waves, and many believe that all who have lost their lives to the passage remain haunting the waters to warn those that attempt the feat to turn back. However, the most terrifying legends say they are not there to warn you. They are trying to bring you into their realm with them. So 
across the Drake Passage if you dare. Moving on to number five, Fallen Angels. According to the Book of Enoch, which is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious text, thousands of years ago, 200 fallen angels came down to Earth and found solace on Mount Hermon. Upon their arrival, the fallen angels began to intertwine themselves with the inhabitants of the area, stealing away their daughters for themselves, and soon a war broke out with a hybrid race of giants called the Nephilim that ultimately punished the angels for eternity. After losing the war, it's said the fallen angels were sent to be imprisoned in a mountain in Antarctica where they will remain frozen for eternity. But of course, there could be a way out of eternity, and some believe if we aren't careful, one one wrong move could unleash them from their icy prison and send the world into a celestial war. Coming in at number four, a fascist base. In the late 1930s, just before World War II broke out, fascist Germany set out on an expedition to explore Antarctica and eventually came across a section of land that they declared was theirs, New Swabia. Now, this defunct area has long been the subject of legends and conspiracies through the years, but none more terrifying than the legend of the base. As the story goes, in the wake of the expedition, the party built a huge top secret military base there. And after the war, high ranking leaders, scientists, and elite military units who are trying to evade their crimes are claimed to have escaped to this base and survived. But that's not all. Some stories say that this base is not just a top secret hideout for the world's most notorious and evil man, but since the party was often associated with occult practices, some say that the base also leads to aliens, demons, and even an entrance to inner earth. Moving on to number three, Scott's Hut. During the early 1900s, there was a huge race to be the first country to reach the South Pole. Then in 1911, explorer Robert Falcon Scott and his team set out on a mission against Norway, later called the Terra Nova Expedition, to do just that. A hut was pre-constructed in Britain that was brought over as a base camp for the crew and they set it up near the Great Ice Barrier. Eventually, it was decided some men would stay behind with supplies and shelter and the rest of the team would venture out further. But sadly, their mission was ultimately a bust, as by the time they reached the pole, the Norwegian flag had already been planted. So the men turned around to head back. But sadly, due to frostbite, starvation, and disease, the men died off one by one and never made their return. Ever since, legend has it that the hut is where the ghosts of the parish men live, and visitors claim that you can hear strange voices and footsteps all around the cabin. Apparently, the minute you walk in, you feel as though you're being watched, and some even swear they have seen the ghosts of Scott and his men lurk inside. Moving on to number two. To Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is the southernmost volcano on Earth, and it is still very much active. Some like to refer to it as the place where fire meets ice, as while well. inside the mountain it is still swirling with hot molten magma, the outside remains frozen solid and surrounded by ice caves. And while that might sound super cool, it is also the site of the infamous Ross Island plane crash, and that is where our urban legend begins. One fateful day, in 1979, a tourist plane from New Zealand was flying over Antarctica. Though exactly what happened is unknown, somehow the computer directing the flight got rerouted and instead of taking the usual route, ended up flying dangerously close to the mountain and in the blink of an eye, the plane crashed, instantly killing all 257 passengers and crew members on board. Said to be overwhelmed with ghosts seeking revenge for having their lives taken too soon, many of the spirits are said to roam the island, wandering around the frigid landscape waiting for un suspecting visitors to walk past. And some say that if you walk past the mountain, you can still hear the screams of the victims who lost their lives to the crash. 
And last up in our number one spot today, the ghost ship of Jenny. As the legend goes, while crossing over the Drake Passage in 1823, the British vessel Jenny got stuck in the ice and was never seen again. For years, no one knew where it really was, what had happened to the boat, or if the crew had survived the treacherous crash. However, about 20 years later, it said a whaling ship discovered them and believing it to be the legendary Jenny, decided to go on board and check out what might still be on it. Legend says the crew made their way onto the ship, but were horrified to find all the bodies frozen, solid, and perfectly preserved by the ice. However, the most disturbing part was the note they found in the hand of a corpse they believed to be the captain. The note read May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. It said the crew were so frightened of the sight that they left all the bodies alone and took only the logbook when they left. However, no one has ever seen the logbook or Jenny again, nor has anyone ever seen the men who allegedly discovered Jenny all those years ago. Number 10, Hidden Lakes. So it took working at a champagne restaurant to find out that salt water doesn't freeze. We Well, it does, but at very, very low temperatures. We used to use it to hyper chill wine that was in storage because salty water can get colder than zero degrees Celsius without freezing. The saltier the water, the colder it gets because salt lowers the freezing point because it interferes with the water molecules ability to form crystals, which is at least one reason why Deep Lake in Antarctica has stayed liquid for millions of years. It sits 55 meters below the sea level and the salinity of the water increases as it gets deeper. Despite temperatures reaching minus 20 degrees Celsius, the lake remains in a liquid state, though entirely uninhabitable, or so they thought. Scientists have covered at least four microbe species living in the water, but that's about the only thing that can. Because the water can reach much colder temperatures than the sea, even penguins wouldn't survive for long. They have been caught swimming in it, but it would feel to them what it feels like for us jumping into an icy lake for a polar dip. You know, if they stay too long, it would probably kill them. How the lake forms exactly still has scientists baffled but they're probably but but let's be honest they'll they'll probably figure it out <laughs> number nine rainforests press rewind on the world for long enough and you would arrive in a world of opposites which includes antarctica being closer to a rainforest than an icy tundra. Scientists gather that before Antarctica was an expanse of ice, the region may have been host to lush forests, diverse wildlife, and even early human civilizations. But why do they think that? Scientists began discovering fossilized wood, leaf impressions, and signs of tropical trees. On top of that, they have found tons of fossils of marine animals, dinosaurs, and birds from the Cretaceous period, so you can see how they deduced the existence of some kind of forest-like area. Scientists are now looking to Antarctica for clues about evolution that we may have missed. So far, they've discovered a 50 million year old sperm cell on the egg case of a long extinct worm species, which is extraordinary if you think about it. Man, like talk about resilience, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Number eight, mountains. Imagine the ice melts away, and beneath those massive, vast sheets of ice is an entire mountain range. Well, guess what? You don't have to imagine it, it's real. Hiding out beneath a two to four kilometer thick sheet of ice are what's called the Gamberts of Mountains. They stretch across 1,200 kilometers and rise about a third of the height of Mount Everest. But how did an entire mountain range that high get covered in a sheet of ice? When Soviet geophysicist Grigory A. Gambert made the discovery in 1958, he had the same question. Though he hasn't actually seen the mountains, covered by ice, remember, but was able to figure out that they were there by measuring the abnormal gravity fluctuations in the area. They have since used radars to interpret the physical attributes of the mountains, but how did they end up that far beneath the ice? The mountains are around a billion years old and scientists figure they should have eroded away by now. But the most popular theory as to why they are still there is that the erosion process just paused as soon as the ice sheet got large enough. To picture how immense this is, just imagine that the Rocky Mountains are covered by a sheet of ice. Astounding. Number seven, dangerous bacteria. Have you ever heard of Pandora's box? Well, it may surprise you to learn that Antarctica might very well just be that. Scientists have discovered microbes beneath Antarctic ice that could threaten life on planet Earth. 
Maybe. Ice is an excellent preservation method and the 420,000 year old microbes may only need to melt in order to come back to life. Now it is equally likely that these microbes could be entirely harmless, but there is a chance that they won't be. But the fact that it could be so dangerous has scientists keeping tabs on them as closely as possible. Still it sounds like a Stephen King apocalyptic horror film waiting to happen so who the heck knows. <laughs> we didn't see the past two years happening did we? At number 6, Limited Infrastructure. In the vast expanse of Antarctica, cloaked in perpetual darkness during the frigid winters, it conceals a multitude of dark reasons why human exploration remains restricted. But one of the main ones is the forbidding terrain which offers limited infrastructure. The desolate frozen desert is devoid of roads, airports, and other vital facilities. So without proper support systems, em embarking on large-scale expeditions becomes a perilous endeavor. The unforgiving environment and treacherous weather conditions amplify the challenges. In the heart of the Antarctic amidst its enigmatic allure, these dark reasons combine to shroud the southernmost continent in secrecy and restriction. At number 5, why would you even want to go in the first place? I mean, come on, Antarctica is like no other place on Earth. It's not just difficult to reach, it's practically inhospitable. The numbers alone here are mind-boggling. In the summer, you've got one person per 3,570 square kilometers, and that number drops to one per 14,285 square kilometers in the winter. Compare that to Greenland next in line, with a population density 108 times greater in the summer, and a whopping 433 times greater the winter. Now let's talk size. Antarctica is a colossus. It's 1.4 times bigger than the USA, 58 times bigger than the UK, and 1.8 times bigger than Australia. But here's the kicker, it's mostly empty. The land is barren and unproductive. No one has ever survived on the food that grows there, if it grows at all. And the environment is brutal to say the least. It's the coldest, windiest continent, with ice caps making it the highest too. Go far enough south and you're looking at up to six months of continuous darkness during winter. But wait, it gets worse. Antarctica is safeguarded by the Antarctic Treaty, a pact agreed upon by 55 countries representing 64% of the world's population. It's off limits for territorial claims and military use. Environmental protections added in 1991 mandate strict anti-pollution and environmental damage rules for visitors and travel companies. So why not explore? Well, just take a look at the whole damn frozen package. At number 4! Money, money, money. Money is often cited as the darkest reason why many people can't explore Antarctica. It's not that you're not allowed, but rather it's prohibitively expensive. The sheer cost of getting to and surviving on this icy continent is staggering. Most of the folks here are scientists, and if you're not part of a research team, you won't find much financial help or logistical support. Antarctica's remote location compounds the expense. Specialized equipment like cold-resistant gear and vehicles is mandatory. Plus, the logistics involved in reaching and navigating this frigid landmass are a logistical nightmare. Limited resources add another layer to this financial conundrum. Fuel and supplies are scarce, and every bit must be managed meticulously to sustain both research and survival efforts. So while there aren't any conspiratorially sinister secrets stopping you from exploring Antarctica, the cold hard truth is that it's a costly endeavor that demands a lot more than just curiosity. And number three is the bureaucracy. Is it legal to go to Antarctica? Well, not exactly, but it's not really a free-for-all either. The Antarctic Treaty, signed by numerous countries, lays down the law. If you're from one of these signatory nations and want to venture south, you'll need permission. Tourists or workers get this clearance on their behalf, but if you're a lone wolf explorer, you'd better be prepared. No relying on research stations for food or shelter, and you must prove that you won't harm the environment. Get denied and go anyway? Brace yourself for legal fines or jail time upon your return, if you return at all. But why all this red tape? Well, international agreements like the Arctic Treaty aim to preserve Antarctica's scientific and environmental sanctity. They want to keep it a hub of cooperation, not a playground for reckless adventurers. So while the idea of the Antarctic expedition might sound exciting, it's a place where rules, not rogue explorers, reign supreme. And number two! It's, it's freaking cold, man. Antarctica's frigid embrace is the first deterrent. Temperatures plummet to a mind-numbing depth, plunging as low as minus 128 degrees Fahrenheit, a cold so severe it could freeze exposed flesh in mere minutes. The relentless winds known to reach hurricane force speeds can transform a leisurely expedition into a perilous escapade. See if the concerns cast an ominous shadow as well. Remote and isolated, this frozen continent is unforgiving to those unprepared for its unfathomable challenge.
challenges. Medical facilities are scarce, and a mishap could spell doom in this desolation. The isolation itself possesses psychological risks, with months of darkness and extreme solitude pushing the boundaries of mental endurance. Antarctica's austere beauty conceals the darkness beneath, a place where nature reigns supreme and human hubris is met with icy indifference. It remains a place reserved for the most intrepid, a place where recklessness is the harbinger of despair. At number one, go ahead. For real. Exploring Antarctica might not be as forbidden as some may think. Yes, it's true that the frosty expanse of the southernmost continent has a reputation for being a secluded and inhospitable place, but the notion that no one's allowed to explore is a bit of a misconception. The truth is, Antarctica is accessible to those with the means and the skills. You see, many people have ventured there and they're not alone. It's a matter of having the right skill set or deep pockets. Antarctic bases require specialized personnel, and if you possess those skills, you might might find yourself living amidst ice and penguins. Sure, it's expensive if you want to have your own trip, but for some, the allure of experiencing this frozen wonderland up close is worth every penny. So if you dream of treading the pristine ice of Antarctica, start saving or acquire those sought after skills, and who knows, you might just find yourself in the company of penguins on Christmas Day, just like Steve did in 2010. The tales of secret bases and alleged encounters with otherworldly beings remain in the realm of speculation, but the veil of secrecy surrounding certain areas of the Antarctic continues to raise questions. Whether it's for scientific preservation, geopolitical intrigue, or something more enigmatic, the reasons behind the restrictions of exploration in this remote corner of our planet remain shrouded in darkness. Starting off number 10 now, we have aliens. Wherever there is a mysterious piece of land, someone will say that aliens have been there. Antarctica is obviously one of those places. One of the more recent claims came in April 2017, when conspiracy theorists claimed to have found evidence of an underwater base off the coast of Antarctica. The 500 meter long object was spotted on Smiley Island. This image was posted to the website for UFO sightings hotspot. The first thing people usually say is that it just kind of looks like an iceberg that split away from the mainland. The UFO sightings website disagrees though. They say the object does not fit in with the normal shapes of usual icebergs. They say that the shapes and forms from this iceberg look very different when compared with icebergs, if that makes sense. They believe that it could actually be a secret UFO vessel in disguise. What do you think? Next up at number 9 now, we have the ice wall. Ah, flat earthers. Don't they always have the best theories? A lot of flat earth critics raised a very fair question of what exactly happens when people sail or fly to the end of the earth and how do we not just, you know, fall off? The Flat Earth Society believes that there is a massive 150 foot ice wall surrounding the coast of Antarctica. Not only is it tall, it's also very thick, several hundreds of meters thick to be precise. Flat earthers often cite the British explorer James Clark Ross. The British expeditions went to Antarctica in the mid 1800s. In his travel notes he wrote of an icy wall saying it was an obstruction of such character as to leave no doubt in my mind as to our future proceedings, for we might as well sail through the cliffs of Dover as to penetrate such a mass. Although of course many historians and those who have actually read the full extent of his journals will know that he is talking about an ice shelf, the Ross ice shelf that was named after him, although this shelf is just 50 meters high and was 600 kilometers long until it recently broke apart. To end this point about the ice wall, let me read one of my favorite quotes from the Flat Earth Society. Beyond the 150 foot ice wall is anyone's guess. How far the ice extends, how it terminates, and what exists beyond it are questions to which no present human experience can reply. Apart from, you know, I guess humans who study science. Humans with telescopes, humans who have actually been to space, but yeah, forget about them. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Atlantis. For centuries, people have been searching for Atlantis, the lost island that Plato wrote about in the Republic. It was the home of the Atlanteans, a technologically advanced civilization who were said to possess almost mystical qualities beyond the average human group. Some people dismissed it as fiction, but others have become convinced that the island is real and that it was submerged under the water thousands of years ago. There's a theory that Atlantis was 
not submerged though and that it actually was frozen in the ice of Antarctica. In April 2018, the YouTube channel Conspiracy Depot shared a Google Earth image which shows a strange area in the Antarctic ice. The image shows a series of lines that, according to the video, have an artificial origin and have recently been exposed due to melting ice in the area. Now they say the object is split into three parts that are all about seven meters long. It almost seems too perfect to be formed naturally. Okay, moving on to number seven now, we have Nazis. I remember one video I did a while back where I discussed in detail the theory that Nazi party survived World War II and are currently living in a base on the dark side of the moon. Yeah. That was an interesting theory, but so is this. A lot of people think that this secret base was actually in Antarctica. They say that scientists in the Third Reich mapped out an area of rivers and caves across Antarctica. Then they discovered a large underground lake. They decided this would be the perfect place for their secret base. They supposedly called it Base 22 or New Berlin. For the conspiracy theorists who believe this, they are now split between the ones who think the base is just lost beneath the ice and the ones who think it is still home to a Nazi community all these years on. Number 6 Blood Falls Blood Falls Get your mind out of the gutter. Sounds pretty terrifying, as it would have been for the person who first discovered it. In the McMurdo Dry Valley, there is a bright crimson river that cuts between Taylor Glacier and Lake Bonnie. It looks like someone went to town on their dinner and just let the bodies drain into the water. But thank goodness there is a scientific explanation. Beneath the glacier, there is a very briny lake that was cut off from the atmosphere and is three times as salty as seawater, meaning, as we know now, that it can't really freeze, but it can, I guess, at a very Low level. At first, it was suspected that a kind of red algae had infiltrated the glacier, causing the vibrant red hue, but in actuality, the briny lake is incredibly high in iron, and since it was cut off from oxygen for millions of years, the red color is a product of the reaction the water has to the oxygen and the sunlight from the atmosphere. The iron in the water oxidizes and rusts, like your car, which brings out the vibrant red illusion that is Blood Falls. Number five, ancient meteorites. You may think meteorites and asteroids are dangerous, but something far less obvious may cause more damage than a doom rock. 430,000 years ago, smack dab in the middle of the Pleistocene epoch, a massive space rock the size of a soccer field crashed through Earth's atmosphere, but instead of smashing into the Earth, an air burst happened. Just before it slammed into the ice, it burst into pieces exploding in the sky and launched a superheated jet of gas. The explosion the explosion caused massive amounts of damage, scattering pieces of itself everywhere, which is how scientists were able to deduce that this happened. They found pieces of the asteroid across the ice and used chemical clues to link the particles together. They were also able to determine that the force of the blast was about, get ready, a thousand times stronger than the nuclear blast at Hiroshima, and that destroyed an entire city. So. And, and some, so imagine what would have happened if that happened today. Number four, oil guzzling fungi. So we mentioned that there might be a world ending microbes beneath the ice, but there also could be something that saves it. A unique kind of fungi has been found beneath the ice gorging on petroleum. What on earth could that possibly be used for, you ask? Well, if these fun little guys, these fun little guys love eating oil so much, then imagine how happy they'd be to dive into, let's say, an oil spill. They were first encountered when scientists came upon fuel containers left by explorers and immediately began studying them. Fungi don't usually just flourish at parties, they flourish in warm wooded regions, but perhaps the fungus that used to thrive in the rainforest we mentioned, they evolved to thrive in the icy bearing conditions as well. So cool, we could learn so much about evolution that way. Number three, top three. Singing ice. Yup, the ice is singing. After scientists installed seismic sensors in the ice to measure its behavior, they discovered a mysterious song. Well, more like a massive ice drum. And it sounds like this. The pitch changes based on the weather, though you wouldn't be able to hear it should you just stand on it. It's not 
audible to the human ear. But the humming occurs on the 500,000 square kilometer on the Ross Ice Shelf, about the size of France. The winds blowing across the snow dunes is what causes the humming, and scientists figure that this could be an even better way to keep tabs on how the ice is doing in relation to global warming. The ice is thinning due to global warming, and the song is almost a gift, an easier way to track the stability and vulnerability of the ice shelf. Sounds like nature is working with us to save itself. Number two, cosmic particles. A mystery capable of breaking physics. If that were possible, it would be found in Antarctica. Since March 2016, researchers have been furrowing their brows over two distinct events that shouldn't have happened. Physicists caught cosmic rays that burst out from the Earth, not from space. The rays were detected by ANITA, NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, a balloon borne antenna. The balloon is designed to find cosmic rays from outer space and caused a lot of excitement when it caught them coming up from the Earth instead. The discovery even implied theories that could support parallel universes. What boggled scientists about this discovery is that two particles seem to be cosmic rays that blasted through the planet and back out the other side. They shouldn't be able to do that. They now suspect that they may be particles that defy the standard model of how particles are supposed to behave and maybe they're a new type of particle altogether. This is obviously a very simplistic explanation. It gets a lot more complicated and there's still more information out there, but still, really, really cool. And Last but not least, a hidden German base. There are several versions of this story, some even going so far as theorizing that World War II mustache man escaped there and didn't die in his bunker. Some theories even say that German intelligence encountered aliens and developed new weapons with their tech. But the one truth is that there was indeed a secret World War II German base in Antarctica. Apparently there was an expedition to establish a base as a whaling station in order to increase Germany's production of fat, which could be used for soap and mayonnaise and butter. The expedition was led by Alfred Richter and other theories suggest Adolf himself sent the expeditions to research ways Germany could become a self-supporting country. Perhaps the reason was that innocent, but with the base having been abandoned 70 years ago, we will never know. Coming in at number 10, we have the legend of the angels. This is an ancient urban legend that has fueled a modern day one. Also, I want to say that angels in Antarctica is a great name for a band. So basically in the book of Enoch, it says that angels, but not good ones, bad ones who wanted to breed with humans, were banished and trapped. <gasps> Shock, drama. A lot of people have interpreted this to be in Antarctica. Now this old theory keeps on resurfacing. In March 2017, Israeli News Live published an article called The Fallen Angels Living in Antarctica Are Still Alive. But like, are they? Coming in at number 9, we have The Ice Is Alive. The ice is alive with the sound of singing. Any excuse, I swear. Some people think that Antarctica is a pure beast onto itself. It's a weather demon. The ice is sentient. They believe it, and it can choose when to mess with you. Around 1,000 people have died in Antarctica in the past 200 years as a result of serious disaster. But a further 20 or so explorers have died on the ice. Now, this includes Henry Walsley, Ernest Shackleton, and Andreas Beck. Expeditionists are prepared for the worst, but sometimes the elements turn. This has led to many suggesting that the ice is alive, something that seems backed up by the continent's mysterious singing ice. Don't believe me? Have a listen. Coming into number 8, we have the Spirits of Flight 901. On the 28th of November 1979, Air New Zealand Flight 901 crashed into Mount Erebus on Ross Island in Antarctica. This killed 237 passengers and 20 crew and was honestly a really, really, really massive disaster, especially for New Zealand. The flight was a tourist flight in which passengers would get a chance to see Antarctica from the plane, which sounds pretty cool. Unfortunately, the weather turned and the pilot was inexperienced and got disorientated in the whiteout. He crashed into the mountain. Unfortunately, there were no survivors. Now, some of the bodies were stored at the McMurdo station on Ross Island before being flown back to New Zealand. Not all of the bodies were found either. Many people think that the McMurdo station is haunted, and those who have visited have reported a wrong feeling and perhaps a feeling of being watched. Maybe it's the ghostly presence of victims of the plane crash. Some 
people link the tragedy of the Air New Zealand flight to the no-fly zone, an urban legend of the ice wall that's coming in at number seven. Literal troll lol 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 lol. Good old flat earthers. Time and time again, they just keep on coming back into these lists. Has anyone seen mine and Charlotte Dobre's interview of flat earther Mad Mike Hughes? By the way, it's on Inform Overload and is seriously worth a watch. It's going to be in the forthcoming Rocket Man movie. I wish that I'd asked him about the ice wall. Honestly, I really wish so. Basically, the Flat Earth Society believes that there is a huge 150 foot ice wall surrounding the coast of Antarctica. What is on the other side of the wall? Well, they haven't been, so they can't tell you. No one has been, apparently. They say that the world airlines are in cahoots and have signed a pact agreeing never to fly there. In total fairness, the explorer James Clark Ross, the British expeditionist who went to Antarctica in the mid 1800s, did actually write about an icy wall in his travel notes. He said, I quote, It was an obstruction of such character as to leave no doubt in my mind as to our future proceedings, for we might as well sail through the cliffs of Dover as to penetrate such a mass. Although, of course, many historians and those who have actually read the full extent of his journals will know that he is talking about an ice shelf, the Ross Ice Shelf that was named after him. This shelf is not 150 metres tall, it is just 50 metres and you can fly over it. Yes, the Air New Zealand flight did crash in Antarctica, but plenty of previously scheduled flights have flown over and back prior to the crash. Really this is just a legend for the conspiracists. Next up at number 6 now we have the Bloop. You guys may have heard me mention this one before. The Bloop was a nickname given to a strange sound picked up by hydrophones across the Pacific in 1997. The hydrophones are essentially like giant microphones listening out for sounds. They are positioned over 5,000 kilometers apart from each other, so it's not very often they are all picking up the same sound at the same time. Except this time, a number of them picked up the same loud ultra low frequency sound across the Pacific. Take a listen. Now to many people that sounds like an animal, some sort of creature that made a noise so loud it was picked up across Earth's biggest ocean. If such a creature did exist it would be bigger than anything we've ever seen. That's the only way it could make a sound that loud. Well, scientists say this is not true and that the sound was actually caused by ice quakes in the Antarctic. It's the sound of ice breaking up and cracking and the sound was picked up as the bloop. Some people still aren't buying that though and say that the sound may have come from Antarctica but it was definitely biological in nature. Moving on to number 5 now we have the hollow earth. Now you've all heard of the flat earth theory that we talked about earlier, but have you heard of the hollow earth theory? As you can probably guess from the name, it proposes that the planet is entirely hollow, empty on the inside. That we all live on a shell on the surface that is about 500 miles thick, which is actually only a fraction of the way to the centre of the earth. So. Where does Antarctica come into this? Well, in December 2016, a study was published indicating there seems to be a massive anomaly underneath the ice of Antarctica. Some researchers believe it to be the remains of a truly massive asteroid that is more than twice the size of the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Another theory though is that it could be the portal or entrance to this hollow earth we live on. I also read an article about Russian scientists drilling down through the ice in Antarctica. Hopefully they don't just kind of pierce through to the hollowness. What? Moving on to number 4 now we have Area 51. It doesn't matter what kind of video I do about conspiracy theories, Area 51 will always seem to crop up in conversation even in Antarctica. In March 2018, news articles began circulating about Arrival Heights, a secret laboratory located deep in the mountains of Antarctica that is called Area 122. That kind of makes you think of how many secret bases there have been between Area 51 and Area 122. Well, I guess the answer is 71, but yeah. Journalists from New Zealand investigated the lab and found that it was filled with very old technology. It was very strange, like something out of a movie. The computers had floppy disk drives. Some of you guys might be too young to even know what that is. There was also a huge computer called the Dobson Spectrometer, which had a periscope sticking up out of the roof. So what is this whole place all for then? Well, they say it's to study the hole in the ozone layer above the continent. The old equipment is so sensitive that even breathing or speaking too loudly is said to damage it. Some 
some people say that the base is hiding more secrets and that area 122 could be the new area 51. Moving on to number 3 now we have the pyramids. In 2013 an article in scienceray.com claimed that 3 ancient pyramids have been discovered in the Antarctic by a team of American and European scientists. Relatively little is known about the pyramids and the team behind their discovery has remained quite silent about the whole thing ever since. One piece of information that emerged was that they were planning an expedition to the pyramids to research them properly and determine if they were natural or man made. If they're natural they could simply be the product of erosion or tectonic activity but if they're man made that would open up the suggestion of an ancient civilization. We know of only a handful of civilizations that built pyramids as big as the ones that have been discovered in Antarctica, most notably the Aztecs and the ancient Egyptians. Conspiracy theorists are already jumping on board with the Antarctica pyramids being proof of a lost pyramid building civilization. Next up on number 2 now we have the big melt. As I'm sure you're all aware Antarctica is covered in a sheet of ice. At some points it's 3 miles thick and as I'm sure you've seen on the news the ice caps are melting. When you see those images of glaciers drifting out into the ocean, it's natural to think, what if it all goes? Well, that would obviously be a disaster. Some estimates say that if all the ice on the Antarctica sheet was to melt, sea levels would rise by 200 feet. To give you an idea of what this would do, the entire east coast of the US would be underwater and Florida would pretty much vanish. It would just be entirely underwater. Another scary aspect of all of this is that we don't know how much or how quickly this could happen or even what it would look like. Climate scientists still have a lot to understand when it comes to this process, but their worst case scenario paints a pretty grim picture. And finally number 1 now we have ancient diseases. As we all know Antarctica is pretty cold. So cold land is buried under 2 kilometers of ice. Recently in Siberia in part of the Arctic Circle nomadic tribes were affected by an outbreak of anthrax that came as a result of permafrost melting and unleashing an ancient strain. A 12 year old boy died and thousands of reindeer became infected. Obviously there are many reasons to be worried about the ice caps melting but it seems that ancient diseases could be trapped under the ice that modern day humans and animals have no resistance to. As the ice is so thick we literally cannot know what is under there and what might be lurking. It seems that the permafrost provides the perfect conditions for bacteria to remain alive dormant for millions of years. Scientists are worried that a Pandora's box of illnesses we don't know how to cure are out there waiting to emerge one day. Starting off number 10 now we have blood falls. In 1911 scientists noticed something pretty horrifying around cliffs in Antarctica. It looked like some of them were oozing blood. It shocked the world. What could possibly be producing these rivers of blood? Was there something hidden within the ice that we didn't know about? Something that could only exist in these hostile alien conditions of Antarctica? At the time Scientists believed it was being caused by algae discoloring the water. The hypothesis was never verified though. In 2017, the mystery was finally solved thanks to research by the University of Alaska Fairbanks. The deep red coloring is due to oxidized iron in brine salt water. It's essentially the same process that makes iron go dark red when it rusts. When the iron rich salt water comes into contact with the oxygen on the surface, the iron oxidizes and this colors the water and ice red. I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief now that there isn't some hellish blood monster living under the Antarctic ice. Next up at number 9 now we have the abandoned huts. On November 1st 1911 British explorer Robert Falcon Scott departed from Cape Evans on his Terra Nova expedition trying to become the first human to reach the South Pole. They made it to the South Pole but sadly they found they had been beaten to it by a group of Norwegians led by Amundsen. The team faced unusually bad weather on their return journey and tragically died before they could even reach their hut with all of their supplies. The hut was used by another team in 1917 but after that it was abandoned. For years it was slowly covered in ice and snow until 1956 when a US expeditionary party dug it out. It was found to be in a remarkably well preserved state. The beds were as they left them, so too were their scientific instruments. Canned food still sits on the shelves. A London newspaper from that time is on one of the desks. The frozen and dry environment of Antarctica have preserved a lot of things but decay does still occur there. Visitors to the Discovery Hut discovered the now century old seal meat as smelling quite rancid and some people thought that the huts themselves are now affected by fungal decay. Moving on to number 8 now we have bacteria. In 2008 scientists managed to revive bacteria 
uranium extracted from Antarctic ice that was 8 million years old. You heard me right, 8 million years. Right away, many people became concerned. Was this a danger? It sounded a bit like the start of a Hollywood movie where the bacteria goes on to wipe out the whole of humanity. The scientists assured the public though that there was nothing to worry about and that the bacteria was unlikely to cause human diseases. You'll note that they said unlikely though. It's not definitely impossible. This bacteria is so old that when it came into existence 8 million years ago, the common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees was alive on the planet. So, how are these things still alive? Well, Paul Falowski of Rutgers University described the bacteria as having been in a suspended state of animation for 8 million years, and that global warming melting glaciers could result in the release of more ancient organisms into the sea. Next to our number 7 now, we have the pyramid. In November 2016, the internet was abuzz with talk of a pyramid that had been found buried in the Antarctic ice. Now, before you dismiss this as nonsense, take a look at this picture. Yeah. That does look a lot like a pyramid. It was first discovered by the British Antarctic Expedition of 1910 to 1913. They were stunned by its appearance and decided to name it the Pyramid, a name still used on geological surveys of the area. It's located in the Ellsworth Mountains, which is a range more than 400 kilometers long. The pyramid is one of the peaks of this mountain range. Naturally, you know what I'm going to say next. Many conspiracy theorists stated that this is proof of an ancient civilization that lived on Antarctica before being consumed by the ice and their existence covered up by today's governments. Of course, experts have dismissed all of this, saying that pyramids are not a complicated shape and are not an uncommon appearance in nature. What do you guys think? Coming into number 6, we have John Kerry and the Antarctica Energy Beam. John Kerry was the 68th United States Secretary of State under Barack Obama. For those that aren't aware, this job is all about foreign policy. Now, In 2016, John Kerry visited Antarctica and the reason for the trip has been somewhat shrouded in mystery. Good old Infowars thinks it has something to do with aliens. Others say that Barack Obama has a secret base there. Alex Jones of Infowars claimed on Twitter that Kerry had split a hurricane up using an energy beam. Weird. Some people also draw some strange conclusions from the fact that Kerry went from Antarctica to New Zealand and was followed by an earthquake. Coming into number 5, we have the ghost of Blood Falls. Ah, the ghosts of Blood Falls. It sounds pretty grim, right? Blood Falls comes up a lot when we talk about Antarctica. It's one of the most visually dramatic places on Earth. Blood Falls is actually an area of the Taylor Glacier, which is named after Australian explorer Griffith Taylor, who discovered the macabre site in 1911. Now, the waterfall is a result of the Antarctic ice melting, and it looks like a giant bleeding gash in the snow. No wonder legend has it that the falls are haunted by evil spirits. It certainly is one of the most scary places on Earth, simply for its visuals. Although I have to say it isn't actually blood pouring from the glacier, it's an iron oxide tainted flow of salt water. The iron gives the water its bright red colour, still though seeing as it's in the snow, it's all red and very dramatic, if you look at it far off it does look like a giant has been murdered or something, which is probably why people get an eerie feeling in the area. When I say people, few people have actually been there, but you know, a lot of people in blogs online. <laughs> Coming in at number 4, we have the Nazi tunnels. It seems that Hitler went on a secret mission for oil in Antarctica in 1938, but many people believe that the leader of the Third Reich was constructing secret tunnels in a war bunker. It seems that Germany claimed an area of Antarctica called New Swabia, and the legends range from understandable to simply wild. Some say Hitler survived the war and escaped to South America. Some say he was spotted in Argentina. From there, it was said that he ventured to the very tip of Patagonia and then into his Antarctic bunker to hide away for the rest of his life. Others say he was frozen and hidden there, which is pretty wild. Coming into number 3, we have the ghost of Ernest Shackleton. Sadly, Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton died on his final expedition to Antarctica before he made it to the icy continent. He had previously been during his trans Antarctic expedition in 1914 to 1917, but sadly, the Irish explorer was never to return, except perhaps in the afterlife. It seems that his original hut, which still stands in the Antarctic, is actually haunted by his spirit. 
basically, well, so the legend has it anyway. In 1958, explorer Sir Edmund Hillary decided to follow in the steps of the late expeditioner. In his expedition journal, he wrote, I remember when I first went to Shackleton's hut, and I'm not a person who really sees things very much, but I went inside the door. When I opened the door, it's rather sort of a bare hut inside, but I distinctly saw Shackleton walking towards me and welcoming me, and then he sort of flashed away and he was gone. Spooky. At least he was welcoming though. You gotta love a welcoming ghost. Coming into number two, we have the lost civilization. Some say that underneath the thick ice of the Antarctic, there is a lost civilization. Humans, as we know, came to be around 200,000 years ago. But what if all the information we have right now isn't actually all of the information? Africa and Antarctica separated 160 million years ago, and some say that long ago an ancient civilization existed alongside the dinosaurs, but are now lost to us. Others say that the timeline of these humans could be much more recent, saying that there is crustal displacement, which meant that large parts of Antarctica were ice free 12,000 years ago. This could have meant that ancient humans lived there. Now, if we know anything from evolution, it's actually far more likely. Greek philosopher Plato mentioned the city of Atlantis, which was inhabited by half humans, half gods, which actually sounds rather a lot like the descriptions of an angel to me, which, hang on for a hot minute, that sounds pretty familiar. Is the lost city of Atlantis buried under the ice, or once again, is it angels? Finally, coming in at number one, we have aliens. Aliens, 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 aliens. For anyone who's ever watched me on Inform Overload, that's my alien song, and I like singing it. It's long been speculated that there is something shifty going on down in Old Ante. That's my new name for Antarctica. Should have used it sooner, really. In September 2018, Google Earth images seem to show mysterious structures becoming visible under the melting ice. The structures appear in a settlement around the size of a small town, which may make people think that actually this is a lost city, but there are tracks and what looks Looks like an airstrip. This has merely added fuel to the aliens and anti theory. Is it aliens? A lot of people think so. If you enjoyed these photos that were smuggled out of Antarctica, then check out part one of this series. Yeah, we got even more photos and stuff that were smuggled out of this mysterious continent. Click the video now.